Hi, I'm Courtney Arlette, and this is your insider look at Pretty for a Big Girl. with film as a kid. Um, I always found myself kind of mimicking what I saw on television that was Star Trek or even like local television shows like Quantum Leap. As you see by the shows I'm naming, I'm kind of like a Trekkie. But um, I always found myself kind of emulating them and putting myself in the situation where if I was there, what would I do? So I fell in love with film as a kid, with Coming to America as one of my favorite movies, Boomerang, things like that. I think I'm telling my age, but you know, that's when I fell in love with the kid. I started to pursue it when I realized that there was really a world that you could create as a writer um, and, and as an actress, and they kind of fell hand in hand. And I just wanted to create content that I wanted to see and not necessarily what was on the screens now. I am a plus size woman. Can you tell? Um, and it inspires my branding because I want to be able to represent who I am and what I look like in just media across the board, film, television, theater. Um, I want to be represented for my talent and not necessarily my size. So I decided that it was important for me to create content that represented me and people who look like me um, and who were me, whether you were a size 30, 32, or you were a size 6. Um, I wanted you to be able to see me and everybody and not just what is perceived as that beauty thing. I just decided to be myself. My voice is mine. Um, you know, say you have a, a group of people that are sitting in a room together and there are six of us and you tell us all to look at the same thing. If we are sitting in different places, we're all going to see it differently. And when you ask us to describe that, our voices are going to be different. I can be sitting right next to somebody and they don't see what I see. So instead of me trying to mimic the person and wait for the answer, I just decide to set in myself that my perspective matters. So, especially being in Atlanta, you know, that's we're Black Hollywood. We've got filmmakers, writers, producers, people who say they are, amen. Um, and you, it's like a, the area is so saturated that if you're not careful, you can find yourself copying instead of being an original. It's not as hard as it seems um, because I have well, let me back up. It's not as hard as it seems to cast talent, right? Um, I have an amazing crew, um, and I they're naturally talented people who are doing the same thing I'm doing, and they're reaching for their goals. But some of us have been placed in this box. Hey, you can be the funny friend instead of being the love interest. So I have um, decided... The see, that's, that's my word for the day is decided because I actually had to decide to do this. I decided that regardless if a network picks it up or not, it was going to get made. And with that being said, it kind of shaped my approach to everything. It has shaped how I um, go about the production. It shapes my marketing because I'm producing for myself and not other people. You just will just so happen to kind of like enjoy the whole plus size movement um, as we do it and not necessarily be influenced by it. I'm not being influenced by your opinion of it, I should say. Um, so far, everybody has been receptive because they're like, oh, we need to see this. We need to see this. But <clears throat> are you going to support it is the question. Because when I put a plus size woman in lingerie and put her on TV, are you going to do it like you did Gabby in Empire and talk about that she shouldn't have been doing that? Well, you think fat people don't have sex? Moving on. So the interesting thing has been not necessarily the process of getting it done. It's 
preparing it so that it is received. It is done in a tasteful way. We are representing ourselves across the board. We are smart. We are sexy. We are funny. We the sister girl. We the loud one. We the ghetto. We are everybody in between. So that's been the focus of it. So it's not as hard as, you know, some people would probably think that it is. Um, it's just whether or not it will be received by the network executives when they see it. When it comes to when it comes to representing the plus size woman, I'm representing myself. So I'm talking about the good, the bad, the ugly, the dating, the nice guy, the dating, the jerk, the being the closet girlfriend to being the public one, to not being accepted by the parents um, because they don't feel like you fit that standard of beauty. Um, that you don't fit that standard of who they think their child should be and almost making trying to make you feel like you're not good enough. Um, I am representing the girl who does want to lose weight as a plus size woman, but she's so afraid that the people in the plus size community are going to turn their backs on her because we have this stigma that if you're plus size, you're right. Um, in order to try to kind of like put it in the faces of everybody else. Um, I'm talking about that girl. I'm talking about body positivity. If you want to gain weight and you're smaller, make sure you do it healthy. If you want to lose weight and you're bigger, make sure you do it healthy. Um, and love yourself the entire way. We are talking about being sexy and having to find the clothes that fit and lotioning your body and making sure you supple and showing people how to treat you and figuring out what confidence is from the inside. Because if you're not confident on the inside, it's going to show eventually, regardless of how good your mask is. Um, that's my struggle. That's my plight. That's, where, that's what I'm on for us, for myself. I'm 36, and it took me a while to understand that I am great as I am. The word no is an amazing thing. Those two letters together, the N and the O and the and the order in which they were placed. Mm -hmm. Nine, nuka, uh-uh. Um, is one of my powers. I call it my superpower. The ability to be able to look at someone and say no. Regardless of what they present, regardless of what they represent, regardless of who they appear to be or what their experiences are or what connections they have or what money it may appear that they have, it's no. Because I'm not writing for you, I'm writing for me. I'm writing for the little girl who sits on television whose auntie tells her she's top heavy. I'm writing for the little brown skin girls that tells her um, that somebody told her she's pretty for a brown skin girl or she's too you know, pretty to be that big. I'm writing for them. Um, and I'm not worried about content being made because I can make it. I don't need you. You need me because if you could create the content, it would be on television right now. If you had the vision for it, we would see it instead of the same ones being duplicated and replicated across networks and, and the same movie coming out with different people. So that's what, that's the superpower. It's, I realize that I got a voice and I'm going to carry it and I'm going to, I'm going to run with it and I'm going to find people who are willing to help me protect my flame, even when you're trying to blow it out. Well, Pretty For A Big Girl actually started to take a life of its own in July 2018. So just this past July, I was working on um, finishing the trailer for Through Atlanta's Eyes, which is a feature film that I'm doing. And <laughs> it's my name. I needed something to give me a buzz. Not necessarily with the community, but just a buzz for myself. You know how you write something that is just for you? So Pretty For A Big Girl was honestly write, me writing something that was just for me. It 
I'm about to tell on myself. It basically was dealing with some of my dating experiences and some of the dating experiences from some of my friends who are plus size, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the in between. And I had been hearing since I was a kid, oh my God, you're so pretty, you're so pretty, you're so pretty. And then it got older and it was like, oh my God, you're so pretty, you're so pretty for a big girl. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Is that a compliment? I don't, I don't understand. I have had, um, I've had experiences where the compliment is supposed to be that you're pretty for a big girl or you're pretty for a dark skinned girl or you're pretty for, and I'm looking at them like, and you would be cute if you weren't ugly. That's essentially what I hear. You're not the, I, I make an exception for you right so I was talking to some girlfriends of mine and we were really talking about dating and the misconception is that when you are plus size you don't date that's a lie and a half in fact boo boo kitty let me go ahead and tell you the man that you think that is so wonderful and loving when he sees me he tries to get at me now he ain't gonna tell you because you got the perfect little body, but you're also boring. Coming back to my comment, child. I'm trying to ruin no homes, so honey. Ain't no thought or nothing like that. But it's just, you know, like dating. It, that's what it ended up being. So when I started the process for Pretty Fort Big Girl, it was originally a web series in mine. And then the, the support for it was great. So it was like, okay, why don't you try it as a pilot? Um and i have a movie idea that i was working on which is kind of like rolled out of so i was like let's see what we can do with it um and i did the pilot and i shot the pilot over to a friend of mine who called me and said did this really happen and i said i would never tell if it happened or not just know that some special things go on and pray for a big girl um so that's how it started i was working on a feature and i just got really long-winded so I'm going to summarize that real quick. I was working on a feature and <laughs> decided that I needed to do something just for me. And I began to write about dating experiences that I had heard through the grapevine along with myself. And Pretty Four Big Girl was born. When you look at your hands, we've heard since we were kids that your fingerprints are your own. Right? Your voice is your own. There's nobody in this world that is like you. Your experiences shape you into who you are. And when you sit on your talents and you sit on what you have been given, the people who are assigned to you in your life to be inspired and uplifted, they lack what they could receive. When you decide that your voice is not important or that your own self fears are bigger than your assignment. You cheat yourself and you cheat other people. Deal with your demons. Don't run from them, deal with them. And write it down. Stop trying to make everything that comes out of your mouth perfect. You can always edit, you can always go back and spend time with it, but write it down. Um, I carry my phone with me all the time. People think I'm texting, but I'm not. I actually am writing. I, I write on my phone a lot because it's convenient. I use my iPad. I write down pen and paper. I have a notebook and I just jot down ideas. Um, stop running from yourself. Stop running from your assignment. And if you find yourself in a place where the people around you their voices are louder than your own, then you need to find a place that you can be quiet and you can truly hear the uniqueness in your perspective. Stop running from who you are. That's not gonna change. And people around you will be happy and they're gonna live their lives and you're still gonna be stuck miserable because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. It never goes away. Either you can be the person who lived and when they get old and they say, I enjoyed my life. I had ups and downs, I had struggles, I had heartache, I had happiness, I had joy, 
Or you can be that person that says, I shoulda, I coulda, I woulda. It's up to you. For you. Okay.